King. Fine. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about what uh, John asked. You know, if it's um, if you're a ministry couple serving in this thing, how to really, or for that matter, it could even be um, maybe you're working the same office, same organization, or maybe uh, you have a business and as husband and wife, you run the you know different aspects of the business. Um, um, and then, so how do we not talk about that? You know, um, so um, see, one good thing is um, it's uh, it's good to talk about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, as long as both of you are in the same, uh, or want to talk about it, you know, maybe you're solving things and you have some creative ideas. Um, so maybe uh, you're uh, at the, uh, you know, you, you feel like talking, you know, in a, it's, it's not about just uh, something that drains you, but something that really, you know, you're passionate about. Uh, and uh, you know you have the same vision, so it's something that uh, you're passionate about, and you want to talk about it. So there's no, uh, you don't have to restrict that. You know, uh, the thing is, it should not be, it should not substitute your, uh, you know, your communication about yourselves. So that's uh, that's the thing. You know, if if all that you're talking is is going to be about uh, about this, about the work, about the ministry. And if that's going to substitute um, talking about your feelings, your emotions, uh, you know, then then there is an issue. So that's the only thing. So you just need to, uh, you know, sometimes the one person is not ready to talk, so uh, so they might. So it's good to say, okay, uh, can we talk about this uh, some other time? Or I don't feel like talking about this right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's also fine. You know, let's talk about it some other time. Let's. I don't feel like talking about it. So yeah, you can defer that to another time. I just, just felt that I should mention that. Okay, so we are talking about uh, listening, uh, how to be attentive listener. Okay, so let me just share the uh, um, screen again. Okay, so when it comes to attentive listening, you're saying that uh, we are hearing the person and um, uh, with the objective of trying to understand the person, trying to understand their feelings and emotions, and not just words that are being spoken. Right? We are we are concerned about, or we are interested in the person. And that is why, you know, attentive listening helps uh, uh, to that uh, to uh, to that objective. Right? Okay. So first thing is to be attentive. Okay. So how can I be attentive? You know, many many times we are. We don't realize it, uh, but maybe we are distracted, you know, in our communication, in our talking. You know, some I'm sure you've uh, met with people, and you're talking to them, and they have a really hard time uh, focusing. Right? They have a hard time listening to what you're saying. Uh, they're just looking here and there, and you're talking, and uh, you know, they look at you, and then, and then they are, you know, they are looking at that other person, maybe smiling, waving, and uh, you know, you you just feel that okay, uh, this person is not really giving me their attention, right? They are being distracted. Um, so, uh, giving your attention or being attentive helps the other person to communicate or encourages the other person to communicate. Being attentive also helps me. If I'm being attentive, it helps me to read. It helps me to read between the lines. It helps me to me to understand the person, right? So uh, being attentive, uh, uh, you know, how can I give here some practical things? How can I give undi undivided attention? We have a lot of, um, you know, forms of distraction. Maybe uh, you know, right now our phones themselves, you know, uh, are very distract. Uh, you know, they they are highly distractive so there's some social media feed maybe your instagram you're this thing and then uh, you know you're scrolling through your messages and uh, and at the same time trying to have a conversation you know it's it's not it, it's not going to happen right you cannot be attentive uh, because something else will catch your attention and you're being so preoccupied with that and uh, so when that happens the, the other person feels uh, you know that you they're not important enough or that you consider them not important enough to give them their undivided attention, right? You because actually you're not considering them as important enough. You're actually looking at the 
your screen and uh, or your phone or maybe the newspaper uh, and that is what is getting your attention okay and uh, we as people we cannot you know much as people say that you can multitask and do things several things but we we cannot you know there's only one thing that we can give our full attention to at a at that point right, in time so uh, be attentive you know try to put away all the uh, distractions right um, maybe reading something working on the laptop you know scrolling through uh, this uh, you know instagram or whatever uh, do it another time not when you know you are having your uh, conversation not when you're trying to uh, uh, listen attentively okay um, second thing is to be open so what do we mean by that you know be open in the sense uh, be receptive and don't come to any conclusions don't jump to conclusions before hearing the person out fully okay so many times we uh, uh, we jump to certain conclusions about about the person okay uh, about their character about uh, you know whatever they are um, based on you know not really based on what you've not heard them fully or even if you heard them fully you know you just come to certain conclusions so the thing is to uh, to be open to stay and uh, to stay part of the conversation and not shut down midway okay based on what they said right but thirdly to be patient okay it's, it's important to be patient to to listen um without interrupting you know it's it's a challenge you know especially if you're of that personality where you want you want to hear everything quickly you want it you want it now you want to be heard, you know let them just say it and if you're that person who's, who's used to watching you know videos on youtube at maybe one and a half times the speed or two twice the speed because you want to watch it watch the information get the information and move on to the next thing right you're that kind of a person and here you have someone who is taking their own time they're not coming to the point and they are you know beating around the bush and uh, and so you're like very interrupt you know very very you're very impatient and you're saying you know please you know can you come to this can you cut to the chase right uh, maybe sometimes we have to do that right we don't have time we have to do the thing and we are already running short of time and maybe there is there's some important communication uh, important information that needs to be said uh, things to be done and then you might have to do that but not all the time right so give people that space give your spouse the space you know to um uh, do not interrupt and many times we want to finish their sentence you know they're saying you know this this time when i went to the uh, when i went to the hotel yeah yeah and then and then i was i i just uh, you know sat down at the table okay <laughs> you know because you're impatient you're just finishing up their sentence you know let when will this person get to the main point quickly so um be patient uh, because being patient uh, really is uh, uh, helps in being a attentive listener helps it listen being being a good uh, improves your listening cap capability okay then one more thing um, uh, be clear about what was shared okay so um, just to make sure you know have you heard them correctly uh, and are you or are you just nodding your head you heard some noise some words uh, but it didn't you didn't understand it but you didn't, you didn't want to you know you just you're just going with the flow right you didn't even though you didn't understand it uh, but you know we just need to make sure that we heard them correctly so that we can understand them clearly right so hearing correctly hearing clearly um if you're not sure and right, we can always ask questions right we can ask questions so did you just say that um, and and paraphrase what they said or uh, repeat what they said did you just say that uh, that we will meet at this place at five o'clock did you say that uh, so yes five o'clock right here fine and so you repeat you ask once one more time it doesn't hurt to you know clarify uh, so you repeat and ask uh, and then you can understand um, another way of things uh, of doing this is summarize you know? so maybe the uh, 
you know, the conversation is coming to an end and you just can just summarize it saying so so what we said was that uh, you know we'll do this 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 by this time right uh, am i right right so so what you said was that this person this family is coming over to visit and they're not staying for dinner but they'll leave is that is that what you said is that what was you know? um so maybe you know sometimes the other person has a challenge uh uh, with regard to clarity and you know, sharing of ideas for whatever you know they're just talking about various things and the summarizing helps you to understand okay um what would also help is to repeat okay repeat what you know, okay so this is what you're saying you repeat it repeat the and then you understand it so understand the words understand the emotions um uh, understand the body language and and so on understand the person okay now, what would help to be also uh, to help in being a good listener is also to be res um, to to res be responsible uh, responsive. Sorry. Um, so, what does it mean, responsive, in the sense to you know? I'm sure you found it. You know, there are times when we spoke to certain people, and um, they they had a very you know deadpan uh, expression. So you didn't know whether they were listening. Whether they understood what you said or not, right? So you couldn't read their expression, expression on their face. So you're thinking, okay, did that person understand what I said? Um, you know, can I go on? You're thinking all these things, right? So to be responsive means to to uh, to give a response to what they've said, and it can be a non-interrupting response. You know, you. You're agreeing to what they said, or um, you know, so that always encourages the person. Maybe you nod your head, you know, so the person says, "Okay, I can go on. I can share what I need to. I can say what I need to say, right?" Or maybe uh, you can, you know, uh, in, in a very non-interrupting manner, you can say certain words like, "Yes, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I know." You know, these kinds of uh, words really help the other person to share as well. And you say, uh-huh, okay. Oh, I see, okay. Oh, really? And that helps them to uh, speak uh, and speak up and share. That encourages them as well. And also, you know, uh, for you as a person, you know, you also uh, attentively listening. And our listening is helping the other person to share. So uh, this would also help. Okay, as a listener, this would also help to be res uh, responsive and to be sensitive to, you know, the tone of their voice, the emotion of what is being shared, and their body language. You know, when you read the body language, when you read the tone of their voice, then you know, okay, uh, you know, it could be the word. The words could be, oh yeah, I'm feeling great, but the cause of the tone uh, in, in in which it was said, you know that though they said I'm feeling great. They are not actually feeling great, right? and because of the body language, like though they said they were feeling uh, great, the body language communicated something else. There was a conflict between the the body language and the words did not agree. So you know that it's it's not right. You know, many I'm sure you've seen those you know some funny videos where you know uh, where the husband comes and asks you know I'm I'm going uh, you know. Uh, Going out with the boys, and I'm just, you know, uh, this evening we are watching uh, this football match or this cricket match on TV, and uh, I'm just going out. And the husband says, and then the wife says, uh, "Yeah, go have a good time." And uh, and uh, you know, but but the, the way in which she said it was not really go have a good time. You know, there was some problem, uh, but the husband did not read that at all. And they said, okay, fine. And then goes and then comes back and then everything wives in a bad mood. And and you only said that I could go. You said, you know, but the thing is she didn't really mean it. Right? Though the words were, yeah, go, fine. Uh, it wasn't fine. Right? So be sensitive to the emotions uh, of what was shared. Okay. Um, uh, there is a, in your notes there is a listening sk skills questionnaire okay so there's a listening skills questionnaire and um, which is quite uh, uh, um, I think quite an eye opener okay so it says let, let me just um, go through some of these things okay 
uh, when you're listening to someone do you try to separate out the verbal and non-verbal non messages yes or no okay do you look for what the other person is not saying or for any hidden agenda uh, do you answer do you, sorry do you ask questions to clarify anything that you do not fully understand or to check what you have received check that you have received the message correctly do you reflect your understanding back to the other person with both verbal and non-verbal actions where you agree with the person do you try to make that support known to make that agreement known um, do you give the other person your full attention when they are speaking even if they are not particularly interested if uh, you are not particularly interested, I'm sorry. Um, do you try to keep an open mind and try to push to the ba back of your mind any opinions that you might have already uh, on the subject? Do you take notes to assist recall? Okay, so so things like this. There are about twenty questions uh, which I which are very very useful for to gauge whether you and I are good listeners, you know, attentive listeners. Okay, so uh, we suppose we do not have that skill then we can always develop that skill okay so we can always develop the skill to be a good listener right not all of us are born with that ability maybe you know maybe we, we did not even consider it we did not, we don't even think about it you know uh, to be a good listener okay not just marriage but it also helps us in all other you know professionally in terms of ministry uh, you know, when you work in a team, uh, it helps us in all other avenues as well. Right? So, so listening when it comes to communication and when it comes to listening, uh, it's an important thing. Right? It's not something to be brushed away and saying, okay, you know, when I get married, or you know, I'll I'll think about that. No, it's it's a, it's an important skill, and the world is, you know, um, understanding the importance of um, good communication and also the good. Uh, importance of good listening empathy okay right so so that's something that you can you can go through uh, and it'll be uh, it'll be very useful okay so genuine expressing okay that's uh, that's another thing that we're talking about which means that authentic communication okay uh, Ephesians 4 uh, talks about this um, let me just read out in the in the new King James as well. And we look at the uh, while we look at the good news, um, you know, translation. Um, so, looking at Ephesians chapter four, it's about speaking edifying words, right? Four and verse twenty-nine says, uh, "Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God." Uh, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be, be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay, um, let's read through the uh, good news translation. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words. The kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. And do not make God's Holy Spirit sad, for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come and God will set you free. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another and forgive one another as god has forgiven you through christ okay so some very important uh, instructions here on speaking edifying words on speaking words that are helpful and uh, uh, speaking words that build up uh, you know the other person okay? so we have uh, different ways of expressing ourselves okay for example some people are very you know knowledgeable cognitive and uh, the way they speak is just to state the facts okay so um, just to state the facts just to look at things very objectively unemotionally okay 
um, some people are very emotional. Okay, they can't, you know, not be emotional about things. Very, very, very emotional. If they are talking about something that is bad, uh, hurtful, uh, you know, something that has happened, and they get very emotional about it, very agitated about it, right? So it, it, you can see it on 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 their face, uh, expression and everything. The word choice of words, they're highly highly emotional, right? Um, and uh, so if they are joyful and they're they're just jumping, their their eyes speak it. They are, you know everything. They are um, they they are very very expressive. Some folks, uh, when it comes to expressing themselves, are very very loud. You know, culturally, maybe that is the way it is. You know, maybe the, as it, it was, it was the way uh, you know they spoke about things in the family. You know, recently, um, you know, one family, uh, you know, we had a wedding that happened and in church, and uh, so one, it was, it was, it was good to see the, you know, how different the husband and wife were, right, uh, uh, and the husband and wife's family also. Right, because I got to meet with the parents and talk to them, and um, so you see, you saw that um, the husband's side of the family very animated, very loud, very energetic, very loud. Uh, even you know, communicating everything, uh, the talk. That is how they are. They're loud. They are boisterous. Um, and uh, the other family, uh, very soft, you know. And uh, you have to really push up the volume, you know, to say, "Can you speak louder?" Have to really lean in to hear what everybody is saying, and uh, so that was how it was. The thing is, uh, so I just reminded of this that they can, you know, they're, they're loud to the point of being even aggressive, right? The way they speak and the way they say things, okay? and the opposite also, right? Soft spoken, very gentle. Uh, so these are different styles of uh, just being expressive. Right, in their communication. So while we have all this temperamentally, Ephesians 4, the verses that we just read, uh, 4, 29 to 32, and also Ephesians 5, 4. You know, so let's use language, use words, um, not foolish talking, not coarse jesting, uh, something that is unsuitable, for someone who is godly, right? We are called to be imitators of God. Ephesians 5 talks about that, right? Um, so let us use edifying words. Let us use words that build up and not strike down, not tear up the other person. Okay. So uh, when we when we when we talk about communication, when we talk about genuine communication, genuine uh, expression. Uh, it's we need to use words that are helpful, not harmful. Um, words that build up people, words that provide what is needed. In fact, Ephesians 4 talks about the fact that there, there is an impartation of grace when we use edifying words. Right? So there's an impartation, there's a divine empowerment. Grace is, you know, an aspect of grace is empowerment divine empowerment so there is divine empowerment when we use words and the other person receives words that are edifying okay so shouting insulting um hating the other person uh, bad language obscene language vulgar language um let it not even be there right? our communication uh, so it's very, very important for us to, you know, because normally what happens is this, you know, um, with with the world outside, okay, with the world outside, we are very careful. Uh, maybe in certain environments, we are very careful, like in an office environment, maybe in a college environment, uh, maybe in a church environment, you know, we are very careful about the words because we know this is the accepted, accepted behavior or expected behavior expected you know words so we many times we you know we we are very careful but at home you know that's when things change at home we have none of the masks 
right? We let our guards down, and we, we, whatever we are holding back or whatever we are, what comes to us, you know, uh, the expression of the flesh, um, you know, we don't rein in, we don't hold back, right? And this is for people who are the closest to us. That's the sad thing. Uh, we speak unedifying words. We speak words that cut down. We speak words that are, you know, that that sometimes shock us. That we are speaking these words. We're saying, "Oh, I'm a believer. Uh, I'm a spirit-filled believer who prays in tongues. I'm a believer who ministers." You know, then how can I be using these words, right? Um, so we need to be uh, we need to be careful, right? Um, so this is something that um, that we need to understand that we need to take seriously, okay? As uh, uh, as people who are looking forward to getting married, preparing for marriage, or uh, as people who are already married, maybe you know, uh, maybe you're married for a long time, you know, five years, ten years, whatever, you know, that doesn't matter. But just because you're married for a long time does not mean that. You can use words that are unedifying. You can use insults or, you know, uh, words that break down the other person. Uh, I just wanted to add that, you know, sometimes people say, okay, you know, I can't be all that formal, you know, with my spouse. I can't be, you know, we are, we are very informal. We are very friendly. That's fine. Absolutely okay. You know, uh, no need to, uh, you know, say good morning to your husband. Good morning. You know, you don't have to, you know, do, you don't have to be as formal, um, but there's no excuse for insults. There's no excuse for harshness. Right? There's no excuse for uh, being rude. Right? In in a marriage, yeah, there's no excuse for that. Uh, we don't have to do that, and that is to be avoided. Okay. So, because sometimes people use that line of reasoning, saying, "Okay, we have been we are married for five years, ten years, and this is how we speak, this is how we talk to each other, right? Um, there's no politeness, there's no uh, there's no manners, and using words, and it's it's hurting, and uh, we don't realize that at times. And sometimes the humor, right? There's coarse jesting. You're you're insulting the person you're insulting maybe the physical attributes of the person you're insulting the habits of the person uh, it's not helping them you know so there's it, it it actually amounts to abuse verbal abuse you're constantly putting down the person right maybe in the front in front of putting the person alone and also putting down the person in front of family in front of children in front of uh, you know others and uh, you're doing it, you think, you know, it's like, we think, you know, sometimes it's just, it's just, everybody's having a good laugh. But the fact is that maybe the person is not bold enough to speak up and say, the spouse is not bold, up, bold enough to speak up and say, hey, I'm hurting, you know, stop it. Maybe culturally, that's not the, you know, thing, done thing. So they just keep quiet and silently suffer, right? Um and uh, you know, there's a difference between laughing at the person and laughing with the person, right? So when when your when your humor is uh, laughing at the person, you're actually pulling down the person. You're making fun of them. Uh, when you when you're la laughing with, and that's a difference because the person also enjoys. It's good humor, you know. You're you're pulling uh, their leg, you know, expression being pulling their leg, meaning that you're making fun of one another and the other person is also enjoying it you know uh, it's it's done in a healthy way um but you know it's a it's a fine line you know there's and you know it when that line is crossed and uh, whatever you're saying whatever you're making fun of actually results in hurting and it actually results in being rude and without any manners right so um we need to be uh, mindful of that, sensitive about that, and uh, and stop any such uh, and language because that will result in uh, breaking down of communication. Right? 
breaking down of healthy communication. So, um, so we need to do everything to prevent that from happening. Okay. So let's look at uh, you know preventing breakdown of communication. Okay. Uh, why does it happen? It happens primarily because of fear. Okay. Fear that you will be judged and criticized. Okay. So if if uh, which means that the person has had an experience of being judged and criticized for what they said. Okay, so no matter what they say, if there is constant criticism and constant disapproval, then the person who is being criticized or disapproved will fear speaking again, will fear speaking out again, right? So fear that you'll be judged and fear that uh what i if if what i say is you know like we said it's at a time of conflict as a time of you know maybe having a heated discussion maybe you're reasoning out certain things you know if you if what they, they've said uh in a moment of um you know very close communication and they've said that and you use that as a weapon and right. you use that uh, to to bring them down then when that fear comes in when there's fear that okay if i say this in future he is going to be using that or she is going to be using that against me so let me not say it okay so that kind of a fear let me not say it let me just keep quiet okay so there is a communication breakdown meaning there's a it's closed out okay um another uh, uh, reason or reasons could be disinterest inattentiveness being preoccupied okay so if i'm let's say you know, for example if i'm the person who's communicating and if i you know if i'm not interested in talking to the person if i'm not interested in listening to that person to my spouse uh, or if i'm being inattentive very inattentive i'm highly distracted and in the middle of it sometimes you know maybe i just move out or i'm very preoccupied okay i'm just thinking about a problem and some of these things are you know it's not like a bad thing but it you know it's just some things that we need to just um, be mindful of and avoid okay like preoccupied you're trying to solve certain things you know, you, there's a challenge at maybe at office uh, or something that you need to work on and uh, your mind is working on it you're occupied right and then here's this person who's saying certain things and you're just drifted off right so if that happens then the person also you know uh, doesn't want to share the next time okay fear of being misunderstood a very real fear if i say this what if the person doesn't understand uh, what if uh, it, it actually results in uh, you know this person not understanding this person uh, taking it another way and it, if it results in a conflict then uh, you know that's uh, that's a that's a thing so person doesn't want to talk okay or maybe no time you know, there's no time no time uh, talking no time uh, intentional time are being made to talk to one another okay uh, suppression of uh, emotions or hiding of feelings that also you know uh, results in breakdown of communication okay so uh, we understand that uh, you know the the words that we speak um um, so, uh, I'm sorry, before, before we go there, the, the, in your notes, you will see that there is also a remedy. Okay, So this, this, these things cause the uh, breakdown of communication. But there's also something that causes or avoids this breakdown or helps us to come out of this. Okay, So let's look at some of those. Okay, If there's a fear that one will be judged or criticized, um, the remedy is this. Okay, How do we come out of that? restoration is this you decide that you will not judge or criticize the other person right? even if you disagree on what is being said right we can disagree in a very respectful manner okay uh, we don't have to make fun we don't have to belittle the person for what they said we can disagree politely um, 
in a way that's uh, that doesn't you know mess with the dignity of the person right and we can do it respectfully okay fear that something that i say if, if it's held against me agree you know as the rules of engagement both of both husband and wife agree that okay i'm not going to use this you know, i'm not going to bring it up and even if it by mistake you do that you know apologize immediately when you realize that you apologize okay um so when when there's a disinterest or inattentiveness you know so you agree that you will spend time and if there is any kind of a distraction you pause uh, stop that stop what you're doing and maybe it's a you know important call or important text that needs to be sent you you tell them okay i just need to send this okay or you know you decide beforehand okay i'm going to switch off my phone i'm going to put it on silent i'm going to keep my phone away and uh, you know so that there's nothing that is distracting and, and uh, you know some families have a rule right okay uh, you know at the dining table no phones no phones no laptops nothing at the table you know there's nothing she's going to um so sometimes you know sometimes we we say okay i need to take this call is very very urgent and there are exceptions you can make exceptions but as a norm you know uh, at our home when we are having a meal together we say okay no phones at the table right no phones no laptops nothing at the table maybe we're just going to you know have a peaceful meal talk to one another and have a meaningful conversation with one another right so have those rules have those ground rules okay uh, and you know if you fear being misunderstood share the concern uh, talk to the spouse share the concern and uh, agree to actually speak clearly clarify and uh, so that the other person does not misunderstand what is being said okay um Okay, now when it comes to the last one that we said, you know, when it comes to suppression of emotions, uh, choosing to hide the true feelings, now that's going to take time. Okay, take time to get over that fear. Right, so they are building trust, building transparency, and uh, and then this fear of being misunderstood goes away. Okay, so so it's going to take time. So uh, agree to build agree to build your life okay um we'll build the trust and transparency okay so let's look at this um which is uh, the power of our words okay so i think all of us understand and or we have learned enough especially when we studied about faith um and when we looked at god's word and so on we we've, we've touched about this you know, touched upon this topic we studied this topic the power of our words Okay, there's enough and more scripture in the book of Proverbs. We talk about, you know, Proverbs 18, 21 talks about death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay. And um, we see in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter one, where God puts his words into the mouth of Jeremiah, literally, you know, he just says, open your mouth and he fills Jeremiah's mouth with words. And then he says, and so that you can build or I mean, build up or, you know, pull out, establish and pull something by the roots. So uh, the declaration of the promises of God, of um, the words of God, bringing out certain things. Okay, So so words can actually build faith. What builds faith is God's word, right? When we hear God's word, when we listen to God, when we confess God's word, it builds faith in us. Or it can actually build unbelief in us our confession our constant confession uh, of not believing our constant confession or confession of fear can actually result in lack of faith right um, and words also release our faith or release our doubt okay so so words are powerful right so we need to use words correctly one good way is to speak words of blessing over our spouse speak words of blessing okay. um, no it doesn't have to be that the person needs to be there but even in our times of prayer uh, when we're praying for our spouse okay that's another thing to pray for our spouse um, pray for the wife pray for the husband um, speak blessing over the husband speak blessing 
over the wife, over the children, over the marriage, um, and uh, over the home. Right? Speak those words. Um, very, very important. You know, one good thing. Uh, uh, I just want to point out one good resource rather is uh, you know I I don't know how many of you have the All People's Church app, the phone app. So you can actually go to um, you know uh, something called a section called Toolkit in the app, and it has what is called uh, Faith Builders. Okay, so basically it is just words or it is just uh, scriptures, sorry, scriptures from uh, you know verses from the Word of God on various topics. On various topics, you know, there's uh, scripture about angels anointing, answer to prayer. Uh, some of you, you know, would have seen it. Maybe for those of you who have not really downloaded that app, I uh, just want to encourage you to try and do that. You know, um, so there, there's there's one section on children. Okay, so here are some scriptures. You know, this this verse that we just read just now uh, about children. Right, uh, it it is there. Deuteronomy uh, six uh, four to seven is there. Deuteronomy twenty eight and verse four. You know, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Uh, Deuteronomy thirty verse six. And the Lord uh, your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, um, that you may live. So it's talking about you know how the Lord will. Uh, you know, circumcise the heart, which means, you know, whatever is uh, scarred that person's heart or deadened that person's uh, life will be taken away. And it says, your heart, your heart, and your descendants. Right? So that will you can pray that, declare that, and saying this will be the experience. Which means so nothing will come between them and the Lord. Um, so they, they they will love the Lord with all their heart. Right. Um, so we can actually use this. Uh, and I'm sure there are many other, you know, uh, Bibles which have uh, these kind of sections. Maybe uh, where there is there is one section about home and family. I just read a few verses here. Um, you know, it says, uh, uh, yeah, Genesis 22 verses 16 to 18. Right. So it says, uh, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and you have not withheld your son, your only son. So he's talking to Abraham after he offered Isaac. So saying, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. Your descendants are the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies, and so on. So you can, you know, these are the words that the Lord speaks about the descendants of Abraham. And we, as the descendants of, of Abraham, by faith, right, we are blessed with the blessings of Abraham, so uh, because of the cross, and so we can declare this and meditate it, meditate and declare this, speak this over our family as well. Lord, thank you that you have said this, uh, that you will bless our descendants, that you will bless and multiply our descendants, and they will, you know, possess the gates of the enemies, and right? they'll be influencers, um, and through them, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed and so on so um so this is a very powerful way of uh, you know declaring god's word god's truth over our spouse our family um, every day you know and uh, we know that the the word of god um the rhema word of god is the is the sword of the spirit it's the weapon an offensive weapon against the schemes of the enemy. So we use God's word, we declare God's word uh, over the works of the enemy. Uh, Ephesians 6 talks about that, right? The helmet of salvation and everything, and then it talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the word of God is something that we can use, and uh, we use words in communication, right? When we, uh, when we communicate with one another. So we use the word of God, which uh, the Rhema word of God, the quickened word of God, God has given to us in um, in in communicating, in covering, in blessing, in uh, in warfare, for the sake of the family. Right. So, um, so we'll stop here today, and uh, just wanted to uh, say that um, you know whatever we are learning here 
scale we can um, to to use it really you know to prepare even for those of us who are preparing um well you go back and uh, you know you read through the notes and um, and with the intention of putting it to use you know, with the intention of following it and for those of us who are already married you know uh, maybe you can you and your spouse you can get a copy of this uh, of the notes you can download a copy of this book and actually go through uh, these exercises for communication and and whatever we have seen you know love languages and um, trying to understand um, you know and and put to practice you know, work it out the agreements you know let's let's do this let's try this let's read this together let's do it and uh, and um, and be fruitful in it you know and and see the power of god's word at work uh, in your marriage and, okay so we'll stop here for today and um, we'll meet again next week for church and family uh, those of you who are there for uh, the uh, biblical preaching uh, i'll see you in that class okay thank you god bless